Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the diversity in the living world. Welcome to the chapter Introduction to Diversity in the Living World. What is living? It's extremely hard to characterize living and traditionally different qualities common to every single living being are to be recognized. Some of them are recorded beneath the cellular association. Living things are composed of single cell or many cells. The living creatures which contain single cell are called unicellular organisms and which contain many cells are called as multicellular organisms which associate with each other to perform vital functions of the body. The second category we have the response to stimuli. All the living things can respond and adapt themselves to any change in the environment. Third, the reproduction. Living things reproduce either sexually or asexually to produce offsprings of their own kind. Growth. All living things grow, develop and eventually die. The metabolism. Living things need energy to carry out their vital life process. It is evaluated that more than 5 million species are available on earth. Of these, around 1.7 million species are known and portrayed consistently. A few new animal groups are port portrayed and added to the rundown. Since investigation of all the living beings is about incomprehensible, they are ordered into groups for the advantageous study. Terminology utilized as a part of classification includes the nomenclature, classification, taxonomy and systematics. This can be understood as follows. Nomenclature Frequently, the living beings around us are identified by local names which vary from spot to spot, from region to region and from dialect to dialect. Consequently, there is a need to institutionalize naming them. Researchers have figured out certain strategies to allot scientific name to every creature, which is known as International Code for Botanical Nomenclature, the short ICBN, and International Code for Geological Nomenclature, ICZN, were advanced to appoint scientific names for animals and plants separately. So you can understand clearly here for plant family and for the animal family they have different groups which give the specific scientific names. They investigate the name has two segments again the journal name and the particular sorry frequent name. The generic name gives us the general idea for us particularly gives us a particular group. This arrangement of naming is called binomial nomenclature. It was given via Carlos Linnaeus and is utilized by scientists everywhere throughout the world. Examples Magnifery, Indica, which is Mango, Homo sapiens, Man. In this case, Magnifery and Homo are the generic names, and Indica and sapiens are specific epithets. What are the rules of the nomenclature? Each biological name has two words. The principal word speaks about the genus and the second word speaks to the specific epithet. The expressions of the name ought to be independently underlined when manually written and ought to be italics when printed. The generic name ought to be begin with a capital letter and specific epithet ought to begin with little letter. The names ought to be either the Latin or Latinized. Name of the writer shows up towards the end of the scientific name 
in a curtailed structure example homo sapiens leg it demonstrates that this species is initially depicted by linnaeus classification it is a process of assigning creatures in particular groups or classes taking into account some defined characters these classes are called taxa sing taxa taxonomy it is the investigation of identification nomenclature and arrangement of life from taking into account outer and inner structure with cell structure advanced process and biological data systematics it is the investigation of the life forms with reference to identification nomenclature arrangement and evolutionary correspondence taxonomic categories the characterization of the organisms includes a succession of a clan of taxa in increasing order or in decreasing order this is known as taxonomic hierarchy the characters of the organism includes a succession of a clan of the taxa in a decreasing order this hierarchy is called taxonomic hierarchy or linnaean progressive system the taxa utilized as a part of arrangement are kingdom phylum or division class order family genus and species species it is the essential unit in classification the individuals from any animal groups are firmly related obtained from a typical ancestor and can interbreed to create off springs that are themselves fertile genus genus is a gathering of related animal categories which have similar characteristics family it's a gathering of related genera order the order incorporates a few related families class several orders that are related to each other are incorporated into a class phylum or division division in plants phylum in animals incorporates related classes kingdom kingdom involves different phyla of animals and different divisions of plants this table gives us the idea about what is the common name what is the biological name genus name family name order name class name phylum division name i will just read one for you the man is a common name what is the biological name is homo sapiens genus name is homo family name hominidae order primata class mammalia and phylum or division chordata chordata so like this we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 different names for the same thing which we call it commonly this is an example we also have for house fly mango and wheat taxonomic types simplification of the study of living organisms has been carried out by the classification into comprehensive categories depending upon their specific attributes which is alluded to as taxonomy throughout the years scientists have created numerous strategies and procedures that assisted in taxonomical studies such strategies are called taxonomical guides or taxonomical aids these are the systems and strategies used to store and safeguard information and additional samples of different plants and animals these help in identification naming and grouping of organisms various illustrations of taxonomical aids include the geological parks museums keys botanical gardens and herbariums herbarium 
is a store room of gathered plant samples gathered plant samples are dried squeezed and protected on sheets and then they are systematically arranged as per the classification system accepted universally herbarium sheets contain marked in regards to the date scientific name spot of gathering collector's name family and so on of this sample botanical gardens it has the accumulation of living plant species that are developed for identification and as an information source each plant contains marks showing their family and scientific name some popular herbal patio nurseries are indian botanical garden at calcutta which is biggest in india the royal botanical garden q which is biggest in the world till date and the national botanical research institute to name these are few let us see some of the major botanical gardens of the world main botanical garden moscow the largest garden spread over an area of 900 acres bunts garden at vienna is spread over an area of 400 acres royal botanical garden q london it has an area of 300 acres but grows a very large number of plants kebun raya botanical garden bazar jawa is in java spread over an area of 200 acres and the garden has section with verge virgin rain forest the indian botanical garden sibur kolkata is the largest botanical garden of asia spread over 273 acres which is a famous for great banyan tree palm house succulent plants and indian grasses what is a museum museum is a place where the respiratory that has the gathering of different samples of animals and plants that are saved for study and further information source the organisms are safeguarded either in additive arrangement or as a dry sample it frequently has accumulation of skeletons of animals too zoological parks in such zoological parks all the wild animals are provided secured conditions of nature which provides them the great opportunity for concentrating on the behavior and sustenance propensities for the animals these these are the taxonomical aids that are utilized for identification of both animals and plants in light of similitudes and dissimilarities catalog monographs manuals are different methods of recording portrayals manuals are very useful in identifying the names of different types of organisms in a given range monograph is a point by point and well recorded work on a specific taxon now moving on role of the geological parks in the wildlife conservation The regular zoo movement in India began in the year 1885 when the first zoo was set up in Chennai. In the zoological parks animals enjoy the protection, fine sunshine, the fresh air and above all ample open space to play about. They have now become repositories of threatened wildlife and a storehouse of knowledge of animal behavior. their breeding habits etc zoological park is the place where they are assured of food medical care and treatment and where they are also feel safe from their natural enemies zoological parks are also very useful in spreading the knowledge of wildlife wealth of the animal to the country taxonomy and nomenclature let us study about the taxonomy and nomenclature in detail what is the definition of taxon taxonomy is a study of principles and procedures of classification taxonomy includes the study of following points they are categorized into four 
one the identification two the nomenclature three the classification four the affinities in identification they identify the living organisms the nomenclature they nomenclate the living organisms classification of the living organisms into groups and study of the inner relationships between the living organisms these are the four major areas where the taxonomy study goes on now systematic is a branch of biology that deals with the cataloging plants animals and other organisms into categories that can be named remembered compared and studied study of only one organism of a group provides sufficient information about the remaining members of that group scientists connected with the study of systematics are called systematists or taxonomists simpson 1961 has defined systematics as a branch of biology that deals with diversity of organisms at every level of classification now what are the basic things that they study here they study about the characterization identification classification and nomenclature when the characterization the organisms to be studied is described for all its morphological and other characteristics in identification they are based on the studied characteristics the identification of the organism is carried out to know whether it is similar to any of the known group of taxa the classification is classified on the basis of its resemblance to the different taxa it is possible that organisms may not resemble any known taxa of the group the new group of taxon is raised to accommodate it the nomenclature after placing the organisms in various taxa its correct name is determined if the organism is into new to systematics it is given a new name based on the rules and conventions of the nomenclature classification of taxon they are again divided into two taxonomies one is the classical taxonomy the other one is uh, modern taxon what are the fundamental differences that we have here first let us look at the classical taxonomy the classical taxonomy deals with the morpho species it has a typological concept species is considered to be static it does not study evolution interrelationship of species is a loss not studied but when it comes to modern taxonomy it is known as neo systematic or bio systematics it deals with the biological species it has a population and bio systematics concept species is considered to be dynamic so it studies primitiveness advancedness interrelationships of the species so the fundamental difference is the classical taxonomy believes that the species are just static and they don't change but in the modern taxonomy they believe that it's dynamic and there are many changes which are occurring from period to period so they study about its primitive nature advanced nature and their relationship with the other species also nomenclature polynomial system according to this system the name of any plant consists of many words for example caryophyllum cacryphyllum saxatelic polygrammicus many metas corumbus so all these names are called polynomial system poly means many simply many name system binomial system by means two so in the binomial system was first proposed by gaspard bauhin in his book pinnax theater botanica so the principle of priority the nomenclature is done by the principle of priority if two names are proposed by any plant after 1753 the valid name is the earlier name proposed just after 1st may 1753 according to the international code of botanical nomenclature what are the main rules of international botanical nomenclature rules what are the basic rules that everybody has to follow this according to the binomial system of names any species consists of two names the generic name name of the genus the specific name trivial name 
example mango the generic name is magnifera indica in plant nomenclature totems are not valid that is generic names and specific names should not be same in plants example magnifera magnifera but totems are valid for animals nomenclature that is like naja naja indian cobra rhytus rhytus rat the first letter of the generic name should be capital letter the first letter of the specific name should be a small letter magnifera indica the the specific name is based on the name of some person its first letter should be in capital letter ego isolates pandit so when written with free hand or typed generic names and specific names should be separately underlined but during printing name should be in the italic word or italicized italicized so it has to be slightly bent name of the scientist should be written in short name of scientist should be neither underlined nor written in italics but written in the roman letters if any scientist has proposed wrong name then his name should be written in brackets and the scientist who corrected the name should be written after the bracket example suga canadensis proposed by linacus and it's corrected by sells bari at the time when the biologist paul lenius in 70 not 70 17 78 when he was surviving he published a book that are now accepted as the starting point of the binomial nomenclature so that is the reason why the latin was used in western europe as a common language during that time of science and the scientific names all the scientific names are either in latin or greek so lenius continued the same practice that is the reason why the scientific names should be derived from latin or greek language because they are almost fixed languages or dead languages type specimen a newly discovered plant should be placed in herbarium dry garden standardized size of the herbarium sheet is 11.5 into 16.5 inches here are the abbreviations icnb stands for international code of nomenclature for bacteria icvn stands for international code of viral nomenclature icncp stands for international code of nomenclature for cultivated plants binomial system we have seen the polynomial system but binomial system as trinomial system proposed by huxley strickland according to this system of naming any plant or species is composed of three names generic name specific name sub specific name so the other category got added the name of the variety when members of any species have large variations then the trinomial system is used on the basis of the dissimilarities this specified is classified into subspecies brassicia olorvica var bactria it's a cauliflower then we have cabbage and no no is are the sources what we have used as the best of our knowledge we are trying to give the best to the learners so that they can crack any competitive examinations we are doing research on google we are using arhant books magraw hill high school materials university materials the pearson books thank you very much for watching the video please do subscribe and stay tuned